Hey guys, I'm Tiffany and welcome to Free Tour Friday. If you're new, I'm glad you're here. And if you've been coming for a long time, I'm also glad you're here. Um, I What I do is I use the Golden Tarot deck and I go through every sign in the Zodiac so everybody gets a reading. We start at Aries and we go all the way through Pisces uh, just to get a general read for the weekend, just to see what energy is available, um, what some of you might be going through or needing to pay attention to. So let's just get started. I'm shuffling in my lap. There's some construction going on on the back side of our house. So I'm really excited about that, but I'm, I'm kind of tucked away again today. So welcome everybody. I'm glad you're here. We're clearing the deck now for Aries. I'm just seeing what's available for the Aries in our lives. Uh, Aries sun, Aries moon, Aries rising. Just put some practical advice for the weekend. I'm like really awkwardly shuffling back here, but I'm getting it done. All right, clearing for Aries. All right, so Aries, what you're going to want to focus on this weekend? Uh, we get the two of wands for you reversed here. So I know that you're trying to make a decision about something. I know that you might be conflicted about uh, going like in one direction or the other. You might have one foot on the gas and one foot on the brakes. That's kind of what this card feels like to me for you, Aries. And so just learning not to, to manage and control, but learning to kind of watch your energy and um, decide, you know, where you want to spin your wheels is kind of what this is feeling like. So um, there's a Carlos Castaneda quote. I think I even, no, I don't have it up anymore. It has something to do with um, like whether we get mad or whether we are productive, it's the same amount of energy expended. And so just kind of watching your energy um, in a way so that it's useful for you, Aries. It does look like uh, you might, there might be an opportunity to kind of just get caught up in something and to just, again, just spin your wheels a little bit. Uh, the best use of your energy is going to be with the seven of coins where you just remember that, you know, you've planted the harvest and it's growing. So sometimes Aries, like, we like those fast results. We like to get things done quickly. We like to see progress. And so when we don't see that progress, we can get kind of anxious about it. And so this is just a reminder, um, watch your energy and go slow with it and know that, that the results are coming later, you know. And so, hi Sarah, hi Kelly. Oops, I scrolled too far, sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's clear now for Taurus. We're just seeing who is, uh, what we need to know for Taurus. Just some practical advice and guidance for the Taurus in our lives. Taurus sun, Taurus moon, Taurus rising. Just clearing for Taurus. Okay. All right, these are what fell out. Let's go with it. Um, similar energy. All right, we've got the Two of Coins and the Chariot is reversed here for you, Taurus. And so the Two of Coins, uh, this is when you've got an equally good decision, so it's kind of hard to make because uh, you could go either way, and it's almost like you just would rather have been only given one decision, you know. But basically, we're doing a fun weekend reading. We're not diving deep into the depths of like uh, serious dark situations we're just looking at the weekend and it's like I could do this I could do that you can see it's kind of a juggling act so some of you also might be juggling a lot or carrying a lot of um, things like you might be uh, overlaying uh, your schedule um, the chariot reverse this is still good this is still an omen of change and things going forward and having the support that you need uh, to get where you're going, the wind beneath your wings. When it's reversed, it's just a little bit slower, it's just a little bit delayed. Uh, things might not be on the, the track that you want them on, and sometimes you might even be the cause of that. So you like be mindful if, if you're going to be late to something this weekend. Just be aware of the other people that that could affect, and maybe you do something different and show up early. And not only do you show up early, you show up early with the snacks, because you're the tourist and you know how to do that well. All right, that's just, those are just fun, playful ideas for you, right? So anything else our Taurus needs to know? The, yeah, the King of Coins. So I think that there's just lots of uh, responsibility, and so that's where you're doing this. It's like, oh, do I do the responsible thing, or do I try to pack it all in? It just feels like a very full weekend available for you guys to have fun with. Um, hi, Maya. You can have a relationship reading. I do those privately. I'll put my scheduling link in with you. I'm just doing the general readings for the weekend. And so after Taurus, we look at Gemini. And so you'll get a free reading by your sun sign, basically. 
So, so what was I saying? Gemini, let's clear for Gemini. What do our Gemini friends need to know or hear? Something fun and practical they can take into their weekend. Okay, that one fell out. Let's go with it. We got the three of coins, so I think we got this last week. I don't remember Gemini, did we? Um, so Gemini's, this is about, see how he's building this beautiful, intricate window. And he's spending a lot of time, and he's taking uh, more time than he would if he was just building a normal four-pane glass window. He's really uh, doing something beautiful. This is a card of mastery. All right, so Gemini, what is it that you're mastering? Something to do with work. So maybe you do have a work weekend. Uh, maybe you are setting yourself up with processes and procedures so that you have a, a week that is that helps you excel and so that you're not in a reactive state but you're in a proactive state because you've um, kind of managed your time and you know what needs to be done but you're doing you're working on a level of mastery and so anything you can do this weekend to set yourself up for success for the next week I think that'd be great you guys the September forecast is up um, <laughs> Sasha will pack the snacks thank you Taurus <laughs> um, yes and hi Caitlin I'm excited to see you in real time too so uh, you know I the September podcast and forecast are up right now and September is a four month in um, numerology and so it's the four year so I think a lot of us are kind of looking for that shift that we're shifting into the fall schedule we're trying to find our rhythm um, a lot of people don't have that rhythm yet because work and school and things are just still different and so anything, not only Gemini's, but anything that you can do to set yourself up by uh, tasks and procedures and checklists and disciplines and um, things that provide a little bit of order into your day going into the fall as we are leading up into September, it's really going to help you optimize your September. All right, and there's a lot of juicy things going on in the sky, so I encourage you to take a look at that. I'm just shuffling here, trying to get really clear, clearing the deck. Whoops, look, that fell out again. I wasn't kidding, <laughs> right? We're working on our mastery. I'm just putting those back in. What's up for Gemini? Cancer. So clear for Cancer. Hi, Anastasia. Clear for Cancer. What do our Cancer friends need to hear? We finally got a cool front and we're getting really awesome sunsets and sunrises out here. Um, okay. Alright, that's what fell out. So, we'll go with it. Um, so, Cancer, this is the devil. This is something, this is a card that I love fitting with new tarot enthusiasts because it's so scary, <laughs> you know? But uh, really, it's not that scary. It just indicates a lot of tension, uh, areas maybe where you have been beating yourself up, uh, maybe areas where you have a lot of anxiety. In my private readings, usually this has to do with uh, sex, our relationships, or our finances. And so uh, love and money can come into play, something that maybe you've been stewing on, maybe you've been keeping yourself up at night, maybe you've been um, spreading yourself thin, looking for answers. You know, these are the devils, right? And so what we want to do is shift back into that self-love and that self-care, and some of us can't do that. You know, some of us hate ourselves. It's sad to say, but true. And so how do we get out of that? We, um, we don't dwell on it for damn sure, right? What we do is we focus on something we do love and that brings that more and more um, to us, that frequency of love, loving others. You know, if you put your face, Cancer, if you'll put, and this is, applies to everybody, but if you put your face on everybody else's face, one of my teachers taught me this through a dream of hers, and that helps you to have compassion for the people in your lives, you know? Uh, would you get so mad at yourself and so hard on yourself if, if that was you, right? And so that's just a little trick of the mind when you're stuck in this um, state, you know? And Cancer, if you're not, if you're having the time of your life, you can leave this one for somebody else to interpret. Maybe I'm not talking to you, maybe I'm talking to all those other Cancers. But there's also this Eight of Swords here, and so these cards do go hand in hand with the idea that you're just a prisoner of your own making, that there's nothing actually wrong that the uh, stress is come, comes from a mental place. It does look like it's perhaps financially related for some of the cancers watching. And so, uh, we'll see. Is there any solution there? Yeah, love. The message of love, right? So, uh, if we can't love our situation or where we're at, we just need to find something that we do love. This isn't to the point of escapism, right? But this is just conjuring, loving, precious feelings, right? And so you're good at that, cancer. You can do that. 
So I'm clearing now for Leo. Let's see. Oh gosh, lots of comments coming in. Angela, happy birthday! Tracy, I just did Cancers. Um, Anastasia, yes. Wow, okay, lots of comments. Guys, thank you. Um, so, let's go with... Hi, Yasmin! Good to see you. Alright, so let's clear it for... Um, who's after Cancer? Leo. Let's clear for Leo. What do our Leos need to hear? What do our Leos need to hear for the weekend? Leo Sun, Moon Rising, Leo Friends, Lovers, Kids, Parents. What do our Leos need to hear? Okay, we've got the Hermit. Okay, Leo, so this is a little time out. You know, it's really nice to take an adult time out sometimes. Like, it's tight, nice to uh, give yourself a break in some ways. But this isn't just a break where you're, like, eating pizza at the pool, right? This is a break where you're really going on a bit of a spiritual um, yatra, a, a bit of a pilgrimage of the heart. All right, Leo? So, um, yeah. So if you have an opportunity to engage or to fight or disrupt, this isn't the time. Like, we know that you're passionate. We know that you'll win. You're a fixed sign, and you won't take no for an answer. We get it, right? But the most loving thing you can do sometimes is not show people what you, how you want them to be. Sometimes the most loving thing you can do is just to retreat into the woods, uh, you alone time with your maker. Um, that looks like, look, we got both of those cards. So that is some serious messaging for uh, adult time out <laughs> for Leo, all right? So if you have plans, don't worry about it. You can still go do your thing. Just make sure that you set some time to fill your cup. All right. Um, hi, Tina. Hi, Kim. Uh, Kim says she's a Leo and she's been thinking of hiding out for a few days. Look at you, your intuition. You were born wise. You don't even need these cards, right? You got it. So yeah, spend some time alone. And Claire, happy birthday. Your 40th was Wednesday. That's awesome. Thank you, Tracy. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so let's clear for, who's after Leo? Virgo? Let's go into Virgo. Clearing for Virgo. What can our Virgos hear? What do they need to know? Something special for the Virgos in our lives. Gives them some practical advice we know they love. It's almost Virgo season. If you have Virgos in your lives and you want to gift them with something cool, like a natal reading with me, <laughs> then I would love to uh, read for your Virgos. And you can schedule that in my link. All right, clearing for Virgos. Let's see, we've got a Page of Swords reversed, uh, Justice reversed, Temperance reversed. Is the whole deck reversed? Um, okay, and Ten of Wands. All right, so those two do, those, these cards do go together. They tell a nice story. I'm actually teaching a class on how to read Tarot um, on September 2nd. It's filling up. So if you're interested, I want you to come. This is beyond Tarot 101. It's not just that we are going to go through the basics again, but we're going to build on it. And how am I doing these readings? You know, part of it is just looking at the card, knowing what it means, parroting back information. But part of it is this intuitive art. Uh, part of it is storytelling, right? So my heritage is uh, Russian, and it's um, the lineage of the storytellers, of the record keepers, you know, of the gypsies. And so um, that is what I can bring when I'm teaching you how to read the Tarot. So when I'm looking at this, I know that the Page of Swords is reversed. So, and I know, I know what that means is like, if this is kind of like a harsh little message, it's like a little stinger, you know? And then we've got the Justice card reversed, which means that something probably doesn't feel very fair. And so then we've got the Temperance card reversed, which means like you might be in the mood to say something about it or do something about it or like get that stinger in or prove your point, you know, what we're working on is a more evolved Virgo, <laughs> okay? So what we're working on is not having to, uh, you know, kind of rolling with it when it's unfair and just realizing that maybe you had some responsibility in putting yourself in a situation that doesn't feel super fair. And so we want to kind of rewind, see where we might have set the ball rolling. Um, and then this weekend, we just don't want to take on too much. So we don't want to tackle too much. Again, we want to observe and watch, not manage, but just take care of our energy. This Ten of Wands is when we're stressed out, when we've got too many balls in the air, we've got, we're counting on too many people for external things. Uh, we have taken on the responsibility of contractor and maid and cook, and we're doing all of the things, you know. 
and that can feel like a heaviness with that sense of responsibility. The Temperance card also reminds us um, to do all things in moderation. And I have some very special Virgos I've been reading for that are in my subscription service, and this was a big card for them. So I think that it's nice that it's woven into itself into this reading as well. So Virgos this weekend, all things in moderation. It's okay if things don't seem or feel fair. It's very, it really, really bothers you and Libra specifically when things aren't fair and balanced, or people aren't on time, or they're, you know, like there's uh, that can bother you more than maybe some of the other signs. So just uh, rolling with it, accepting it, you know, life on life's terms. Um, the, what is the prayer? Um, I can't think of it. It's one I say every day. But anyways, you can, you can mind shift your way into moderation for all things. Um, all right. Hi, Yvette. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Diane. Looks like we got Mora and Kim. <laughs> awesome. You were, Kim was even calling it a timeout. Perfect. So I think I was speaking to you, my dear. Um, Yvette, let's see. All right. Maya's a Scorpio. Karen has a sad, broken heart. I'm sad too. Why are you sad? How can I help? All right. So after Virgo, let's do um, Libra. So clearing the deck for Libra. Let's see what our Libras want to hear this weekend. Clearing for Libra. Clearing for Libra. Seeing what our Libras need to hear. Libra Sun, Libra Moon, Libra Rising. Libra, the great scales, the constellation that uh, balances and equates and makes things fair. Sorry, I don't know how to turn that off. Oh gosh, okay, great, cool. All right, clear for Libra. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let that pass. This happened recently in one of my uh, mediumship classes, <laughs> and it's like sometimes you just pay attention. You know what's happening in this moment, Libra? Are you getting a call? You know, are you answering a calling? Right, you just play with it. All right, Libra, the sun is shining. You know, you're illuminating. You are a light keeper. How are you uh, sharing your light with the world? You know. Are you keeping it all to yourself? Are you giving it too much away? Like just taking a look at how you're illuminating, what you're winning, uh, what you're um, excited about. That's a very positive card. It can simply mean to spend some time in the sun, so to simply get some more vitamin D, you know, um, to make hay while the sun shines is another interpretation of that card. So um, using the full capacity, the full hours of the day to do what you need to do. It's not all fun and games here, Libra. We do have some Nine of Swords, okay? So fine, it's like this is the card of staying up at, late at night, having some anxiety, not being able to sleep well, uh, tossing and turning, chewing on something. Yeah, look, we got the Five of Wands too. So I'm glad we got the Sun to balance out this because it does look like there's a little bit of conflict going on with something that is just unseen, unheard, you don't know all the information about. And so it's not that, um, you know, it could be there's some deception going on that somebody's not showing up as their authentic self. It could be that you aren't showing up as your authentic self. When you get both the sun and the moon, you know, three years ago to this day, I was in Wyoming watching the Great American Eclipse. And so this is eclipse energy. And so when you get these cards together, it could be, it could feel like you're living a hundred days in 24 hours. It can feel like a lot's going on. And you can also feel um, somewhat like in the dark about something. And so you're just going to take the moral high road this weekend. That's what I, I feel like. Just be proud of yourself. You know, have some fun. Spend a little time in the sun. Um, okay, so let's clear for Scorpio. Let's go into Scorpio. See what our Scorpio sun, moon, rising need. If you guys are new and you're watching me for the first time, I'm a Scorpio. I have four planets in Scorpio. That's a lot. I have Sag rising and I have four planets in Libra. So I... Uh, I'm very, I have a very condensed chart, uh, but I've been reading for about 20 years, and I'm familiar with my way around the constellations, and um, let's just see what we can get for our Scorpios, myself included. Okay. Awesome. Okay, we've got, 
All right, so there's some heaviness here. We've got a five of swords where um, this is some, this is a fight where an argument where somebody has an unfair advantage and um, you know, it just, it's like maybe you put yourself in a situation where, uh, or there is a situation brewing where um, it's like you have, it's like they're telling you to make a decision but not giving you the power to do it. It's like that kind of a thing. It's like, huh? How did I get myself here? And it feels like uh, you're taking on a lot of responsibility. It feels like you're being very responsible. Um, but here we have the Magician card. So you have the ability to do anything you want this weekend. And kind of that's the freedom you might need, Scorpio. Is just this, the idea that you can make the weekend whatever you want. You can work really hard. Um, you can kind of like mind chew on some situation that's bothering you. Right? Or you can just go forward and do something fun that you like. Knight of Cups, he's going forward. He's an emotional type of a person. He likes to play. And so the magician turns lead into gold. He has one hand up and one hand down. So as above, so below. So as you think, so shall your world be. So really, Scorpio, this reading for you is I'm not telling you what to do or where to go or how to live your life. I'm just saying how you're thinking about this weekend is going to be critical to how it plays out. So do you want to get a lot off your plate so that you can have a weekend? Or um, do you have a lot going on and it's better for you to work during the weekend so that it doesn't stress you out next week? You know, uh, those are the things to keep in mind. It's just, it's going to be exactly what you make it. So be the creator of your own weekend. All right, now we're clearing for who's after Scorpio Sagittarius. Let's see what our Sagittarius needs here. Clue for Sag. I hope some of you guys are interested in this row class. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's the second in a series that I do. It's September 2nd. And it will be recorded if you can't come live. So I'll send you the replay link. Alright, clearing for Sag. Cool. All of these things fell out. Okay, look. you got the same cards as, this, as Scorpio here. The Magician and the Knight of Cups. So shifting something into a loving situation. Uh, the Hermit, you know, this is spending a little alone time. And then we got the Page of Cups doing something that you really like. So filling your cup up this weekend, Sagittarius. Uh, also being the shapeshifter and the transformer if life isn't going how you want it to. We've got this um, Page of Cups here to remind you to connect with what's most loving for you. You know, and if that feels impossible, um, spending your alone time to sort that out is going to be really helpful for you. Alright, let's clear now for... Who's next? Uh, Capricorn. Let's clear for Capricorn. So many roomy quotes running through my head for you, Sagittarius. <laughs> I'll spare you guys. It's awfully poetic. All right. So clear. Thank you, Tina, for saying that resonates. Um, we're clearing. What sign is Barbara? Caitlin wants to know. Are there any Barbaras watching? I don't know. I don't know who Barbara is. We ha we have a lot of deliveries coming, so it's probably just a, a delivery <laughs> notification. Um, okay, we're clearing for Capricorn. Clear for Cap. What do our Capricorns need to hear? Just as simple as that. The Eight of Cups. Okay, Capricorn, this card is clear for me. It means walk away, don't look back. It means it's time to move on. It means uh, you, you're overcooked, you know. Uh, the Knight of Wands, it's like you, you just got to go forward. You got to press on. It just didn't work out how you thought it was going to something. Um, maybe some of you are moving out, like maybe you've been living with a boyfriend girlfriend and it's time to move out. And uh, maybe some of you are saying goodbye to a business partner or a venture that you wanted to happen and it isn't. Just consider this a blessing in disguise because you're trying to shine your own light, you know. And as long as you were kind of meshed in this other situation that you're walking away from, whether it's love, money, something simple and basic, something big and dramatic, it doesn't matter. There is a piece that you are have outgrown. And um, you've just got to kind of go into the cocoon and come out the butterfly. You've got to shed the snake skin. You've got to, what I don't know what the hell cicadas do, but you got to do that thing to get out of the old way. Um, so you're getting out of your own way and you're shining your light so that you can become the star of the show, so that you can become the light bearer, the water bearer, you know, Cess, the Saturn. The star is uh, very similar to Aquarius energy. And so it's, see how she's got those two cups? She's bringing life, you know? 
And so something has been stagnant and stale and you just got to get out of that thing that feels awful. You just, you have to, you got, because you need to be answering a calling to serve others. So it's not just about, yay, and now I get to live my life. It's like, yay, now I can actually fill my cup and serve others, you know? So this other, whatever you're walking away from just uh, felt kind of like the time is over. It's expired. That's all. doesn't mean you can stand up for yourself without hurting the other person, stand up for myself, not against the other man. We can be like Teflon and explaining things. Uh, always make your own decisions. Don't listen to some crazy tarot lady. <laughs> you know, uh, just trust yourself and you're going to be fine. Um, so let's see who's after Nadine loves Rumi too. Awesome. Um, happy birthday, Noel. Awesome. Um, so for private readings, I'm happy to do that if you want to schedule with me. And uh, this is just for the um, signs. So after Capricorn, we get Aquarius. Let's clear for Aquarius. <laughs> I'm still cracking up about what sign is Barbara. <laughs> um, okay, so clearing for Aquarius. Coming to the end of our time together. Thank you for hanging out with me. <laughs> Alright, Aquarius. Two of Swords, Nine of Cups, Five of Coins. You know, I had a dream about one of my Aquarius friends last night. I need to get in touch with him. But the Two of Swords, this is about um, a decision that comes at a cost. It doesn't feel good. It's almost like maybe you had to fire somebody instead of letting them be on furlough. Or maybe you had to deliver some tough news, you know. Or maybe you were receiving some tough news. The Nine of Cups at reverse, it's like this way it's like you get your wish you get what you want and this way it's like it didn't it's not quite panning out as you had hoped and it just feels a little bit sticky it might even be a financial decision so you know Aquarius you have the gift of a detachment you have the gift of being able to be not really like aloof but being able to be like hey this is just business uh let's you know set our feelings aside to have this conversation or make this decision because here look we've got the knight of wands next and he does indicate um, moving forward positively, happy, healthy, this, whatever, this hard decision or, or hard talk you have to have, it's like uh, such a relief. It's like rip the band-aid off so that you can feel good and then you're going to have a great breezy weekend. Um, Sag says a reminder, thank you for the self-care. You're very welcome. Um, okay, and then who's after uh, when we did a prayer? So Pisces, we made it, guys. Three to row Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Friday, yeah, Friday. Pisces, let's clear for Pisces. I was thinking about doing some um, week ahead in, in astrology on Fridays. I don't know if you guys would like that. Please let me know in the comments. Um, it w what it would do, I would do is just look at next week and say here's what you can expect in the astrology. Um, it's basically in my forecast and podcast, but it's just a nice way to reach out and keep our community uh, engaged in talking and you know what's up with the astrology so if you would like that please let me know I was thinking about doing it on YouTube um, but let's see I could repost it here easily just I'm just um, lucky that's a hilarious question and no I cannot answer that <laughs> um, let's go into our Pisces reading so clearing the deck for Pisces The 2021 calendar is out. If anybody needs the digital calendar, it's awesome. Okay, I'm just waiting for that moment when it feels right. And I'm so glad I did because we got two of the most powerful, you know, here we got three major arcana cards. Very powerful read for our Pisces friend. The first one here is the world card. And the world card is when we have, um, we have trans we have kind of graduated you know things are coming full circle we have a better understanding uh, we have matured and we have a responsibility now where uh, we are responsible to um, kind of rise to the occasion of our lives so Pisces you're rising to the occasion of your life um, th there is a death card so there's an ending you know there's something that just um, you know, you, you've outgrown as well, very similar, but you, you are moving forward. Here's the chariot. You have all the support you need. If there's any fear or tension or sadness around this stuff, you know, our hearts are with you. However, you do have what you need. Life does go on. 
and you do have a responsibility to live it, to not get stuck in any sorrow or uh, anger or regret. Sorry, this was not reversed. Um, the Ace of Wands is about doing something new. So if you've always wanted to um, write a book, if you've always wanted, if you've been a teacher your whole life and you wanted to be a nurse, like maybe this is the time to make the shift. If you have just been living in an unhealthy fam family dynamic or an unhealthy relationship dynamic, uh, you don't have to quit or leave, but you can start to shift your insides and you can start to shift your responses. And that too is a new beginning and taking great responsibility for this gift of life that you have. You know, uh, Pisces, you have a great amount of compassion and the greatest ability to feel empathy for everybody in your world. And so um, everybody that's in your world is blessed by you. And so you are a natural born leader and you are kind of carrying things for people. And so learning how to discern that is going to be important on your path. Okay, cool. So that's into the week ahead. So I'm going to um, stew on that. I think I'll probably start in September. Um, and guys, thank you for watching. Uh, take what you want and leave the rest. It's just some fun readings for your weekend, a way to connect, a way to lighten up, a way to say, oh yeah, that makes sense. Or, oh, that doesn't make any sense at all. Or, oh, I just want to do my life differently. You know, this is, these are uh, like these little tarot readings are triggers for you to feel heard and seen in the cosmic unseen world. All right, so um, until we can play and work together again, namaste. I hope everybody has a great weekend. And um, thank you so much for being part of Wise Skies. You can get everything at wiseskiesadvice.com.